Tell me if this sounds familiar. You've just finished a delicious meal and you feel absolutely stuffed until yeah. dessert. <laughs> And suddenly it seems like you grew an extra stomach. Wait, you just said you couldn't eat another bite. <laughs> it's not only a common feeling, there is some science behind what some call dessert stomach. Dr. Frank George here to explain how it can work. Well, it says for or against. It seems to be mostly against our waistline, but maybe for. There is a positive lining okay. coming at the end here, Devin and Kim. So, you know, when we eat, the feeling of fullness is actually a pretty complex interplay between our blood sugar, some hormones that are released in the gut and in the brain, and even, of course, the physical effect, like the amount of stretch and pressure in our stomach. But all of that can be overridden by a simple trick of nature, and that is the instinct to eat a variety of foods. By having a variety of foods and different tastes and flavors on our plate, we're making sure we're, we're really giving our body everything it needs to feel satisfied and to help it function properly. Allegra Picano, a registered dietitian at Henry Ford Health, says it's our body's need to satisfy different nutritional requirements that leads to dessert stomach. It is an evolutionary standpoint, so we're, we're really just trying to, you know, follow that concept of eating the rainbow, eating a variety of, of fruits and vegetables and, and foods that are going to keep us healthy. So even after a filling meal, if we haven't tasted something sweet, our brain and stomach are more receptive to dessert. The dessert stomach comes in because once, we, once we've kind of satisfied those taste buds with those savory or salty or, or bitter foods, um, we haven't really satisfied those sweet taste buds. So those sweet fat foods sound really exciting for us and are, in, are exciting for our brain. And when that happens, suddenly you don't feel as full and your brain makes room for dessert. Just remember, you don't have to eat it all. It really only takes a few bites of something to satisfy that, that, that craving or that need for something sweet. So if you are need, in the need for something sweet, having just a few bites and eating it slowly and mindfully um, might help to kind of satisfy that a little better. Now, incidentally, this same instinct to eat more diverse foods can also be used to actually reduce your food intake. Studies have shown if you limit the variety in your diet and don't tempt yourself with different foods, it can actually help you eat less food because mm. you basically become bored of eating the same thing. So, so can this be applied to kids, i.e. four-year-olds like mine, <laughs> that if they had a more of vari a variety, yeah. that they would eat more? because oh, the you know, they're pi thing. Exactly, uh -huh. they're picky uh -huh. eaters. Definitely, and that's actually kind of an interesting thing because one of the more often quoted experiments in this area showed exactly that. When children were given macaroni and cheese repeatedly, even if they liked macaroni and cheese, eventually they actually ate less of it compared to kids <laughs> who were given a variety of foods like chicken nuggets and burgers. Oh. They actually consistently ate, ate more, more food. Something. So it's the variety yeah. <laughs> that actually gets you to eat more. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> really fascinating Food stuff. For thought. Never heard of dessert <laughs> stomach before. All right, Frank.